Like literally you would know that I am a professional YouTuber because like camera issues. <laughs> You're literally per perched on a jar right now. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to a new video. <laughs> You're sort of precariously perched, but I think that'll work. Okay, so <clears throat> for this first part of this video, um, I just wanted to do a little explaining. We're gonna start a new series that has to do with doing art for therapy, for mental health. And I'm gonna start out by saying and reminding you all, I am not a mental health professional. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a counselor. I do encourage you to seek out professional help if you're struggling with your mental health. I'll try to find some links for some online places where you can um, research getting some help down in the description below. Um, I'm doing what's working for me on the advice of my professionals that I'm talking to. I do have a counselor and I am on medication. I have generalized anxiety disorder and depression for those that don't know. So anyway, I forgot when I first started my YouTube journey that mental health and doing art for mental health was one of the things that I did do and that it worked and I forgot to keep doing that and um, now I'm back to doing it and oh, I do love it. So anyway, I'm going to show you um, some new things that I'm doing and share my experience with you. Hopefully you decide to follow along and if you do, um, please share. I do have a Facebook group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression. Uh, the link is in my link tree list of links down below. Um, I encourage you to share it over there and um, tag me in the post if you want to make sure I see it. I'm also on Instagram and all that stuff too. Um, and if you do videos on this, I would love to see it. So make sure that you tag me or tell me or something. Anyway, let's go down to the table and let's get started. Okay, I'll explain what this is in a minute. So years ago, and I mean like 2016, 2017, 2018, I took this Moleskin Cahier and I used, I was trying to use up ink sprays or yeah, like delusion sprays. So fun fact, they're not my favorite thing. And I did have some and I wanted to use them up. Um, so I took one of these journals and I just sprayed random colors on every page squished the pages together and then stuck something in between them while they dried. And then I went through and drew over whatever was on there. Now, when I first started it, I really started tried to like force an image into what was on there in the background. This, of course, is being what was in the background. Um, most of the time, not all the time. I really tried to not think about it too much and just draw what I was inspired to draw, draw, draw or what I was feeling. Most of the time I felt like I was forcing it and I really wasn't opening up. Um, sometimes I just was inspired with words. Sometimes I was really, yeah, I was just really trying to figure out my voice and what I wanted to say. I did have, I did do a photo shoot for Yahoo Small Business a long time ago, and I did have this journal at the photo shoot, and they had me do a couple of drawings in it, this being one, this being another one. Um, they weren't really what I was feeling. At some point, I picked this up recently, I, I re rediscovered it and said, you know, I really should finish this. And I started again with doing drawings that I was sort of felt like I was forcing myself to, to do. Um, and then I slowly moved towards seeing what the ink splots spoke to me, what they were inspiring me to draw, or in this case, write or journal. Um, what was I feeling about what was in the page? 
and slowly it became more about what I saw on the page and less like thinking and analyzing and just drawing what I was feeling. And it became a very therapeutic process for me, sort of like a, uh, you know, the Rorschach ink blot test where, you know, the therapist will have you look at ink blots and, you know, what do you see in the ink blot? And instead of just saying what I would see, I started drawing what I would see. And um, I found that very, so therapeutic that I'm going to, I think, keep doing it. So I'm working on a couple more journals with ink blots or, you know, spots already distressed on the page. And we are going to, I think that was my phone. We are going to um, prep another couple of journals. Now again, in this one, I, and I'm gonna show you how I do this. It's gonna be part of the process. It's gonna be a multi-part video series. Um, in this first one, we're gonna just prep our journal and I'm gonna just do this like quick th flip through. Um, you can see what I'm talking about, like towards the end, I was just, you know, oh, that looks like bubbles to me and I drew bubbles on a fish. Um, oh, I see a face, draw a face. Ooh, I see abstract like pie, triangle slices of pie, like whatever, yeah. So um, I'm gonna show you how I prep the journal in this video. And I'm gonna find someplace safe to put that one. Okay, so you can use any journal. I want you to use what you have. Don't go buy anything new. Um, this is a moleskin cahier. The paper is pretty thin, but I was okay with that. I knew I was going to work single sided. I didn't care if it bled. Um, you can use a bigger journal. I do recommend one with not too many pages so that you just have this to work on like for a month and then see if you still like it. If it's too many pages and you're like me, you're going to get bored halfway through. You're never going to finish it. Um, or you'll get discouraged or like, I don't know what the deal is. Most of the time with big journals, I never finish them. Um, these are traveler's notebooks. Now this I've already started and this is coffee mixed with a little bit of walnut colored ink. Um, and I did that and I let it dry. I did it yesterday. And now we're, I, I'm looking at it and I'm feeling like it's not enough color. Um, the ink blots although there are blots on here, it's not enough of what I want. And for whatever reason, I'm feeling the blues and I'm gonna put blue. I'm gonna show you what I do. This is one I did a few days ago and I started it the same way. It's the same kind of journal. Instead of doing it the way we're gonna do it, I used, um, I mixed up a little cup of water and some of the same coffee and walnut ink and I used a pipette and I just dropped it on. I got it really, really wet, so wet that the paper started ripping. I was okay with that. I just put masking tape on it after it was completely dry. I did know right away that the coffee wasn't enough color and these um, tealy blue colors you see are pigment powders. And I have a bunch of those that I'm just trying to use up so I use those on here. Now the only problem with some of these pigment powders is the glittery ones, they, I don't know if you can see that, they kind of rub off a little bit, but that's okay. Um, it's totally, it's totally okay. And some pieces of paper are just completely missing. It's going to be part of the journey of this journal. I'm, again, we're going to work on creating something to work out our emotions or feelings or mental health about whatever is going on in our lives based on what we see on the page, what we're feeling on the page. It's not about creating perfect art or anything. That being said, if you're just into junk journaling, this is a great way to distress a journal. So anyway, I love the way this one turned out, but it did get very wet. So anyway, this time I have decided to stick with spraying like I did the first time. So this one, I mixed up the walnut ink and coffee in this little spray bottle. I used up the whole bottle on the journal and when I was done, then I just washed the bottle out, which we'll do again. One of my issues with sprays is that they clog all the time, which drives me up the wall. Now, if you are, if you don't have, maybe you don't drink coffee, you could use tea. Um, maybe you don't have any um, pigment powders or inks. Um, anything that you can dissolve in water and get watery, a little bit of acrylic paint, a little bit of, maybe you have a re-inker. Uh, maybe you have, um, this is an acrylic ink, 
Um, but maybe you have a little bit of watercolor paint. Dissolve a bunch, uh, dissolve some in a bunch of water and use that. You can use anything, use what you have. Look around your art room. What do you have that's gonna dissolve in water and create a color that you want that you're feeling right now? Maybe you wanna do a few of them in different colors. I do recommend that you either use spray bottles you're okay with tossing out, or as soon as you're done, that you clean the bottle out. Um, because if it's acrylic, it's going to dry and clog the tip, like kind of guaranteed. Um, get an old cookie sheet. I do line it with a piece of paper because this is going to get inky and this could be collage paper for a future product project. So anyway, we're going to open it to the first double set of pages. Well, maybe I'll start here. Okay, so we're going to take our bottle, which already has water in it. Gonna open my acrylic ink. There we go. And drop some in there. And do I want to put any other colors in there? Let's see. Uh, not that one. I want to put a little bit of gray in there. Because that's just what I'm feeling. I don't know why. This is like a purpley gray. We'll put a little bit in and see how that looks. Put the lid on and then shake it up. Yeah, that's good. I like that color. I just put a little bit in and it just took a little bit of the brightness out of the blue. Okay, and then, and then have something next to you that you can put in between the pages. Now, I just use clips. <laughs> I'll show you. I just use like these. I've got a bunch of different kinds of journaling clips around the art room and you'll see as we go along I just put them between the pages so that they don't stick together too much. Now they're going to stick a little bit and you'll get like little um, spots where the paper is going to want to rip. If it rips all the way through just put a piece of masking tape there. It's part of creating this random um, series of marks on the pages that you're later going to do some art therapy over so um, and journaling over so anyway um, we're going to just go with it but yeah this will help them from sticking completely together in theory all right so now we're going to just just like that And you might find you have to do this a few times with a few different colors in order to get, you know, the kind of look that you want. Maybe you want to make a much darker color because you're not feeling these lighter tones. Do what you're feeling. Think about, you know, where your mental state of being is at the moment and what's going to work for you. And then maybe turn on some music or your favorite podcast. You'll notice I'm alternating where these clips are. That's just so that I can get through the whole book in one go around, but maybe you just want to do one or two pages and you don't you're not impatient like I am and you want to just do the whole thing and get it over with and let it dry. Now, once you do this, it's going to take a couple of days to dry completely. See, here's a piece that has torn, but you know what? It's part of the journey of this journal and the journey of my mental health, and that's okay. The only problem with doing it this way is your fingers get sore. If you want to do more than, say, one color, pre-mix all your colors. You can spray all the different colors on here and then um, just keep going. I don't clean these clips off in between and so they may transfer some of the coffee color or other colors onto the paper. Totally okay with me.
just keep going until you get the whole book done. Don't freak out if something rips. Just let it go. When it's done and dry, get some tape. Maybe you have some washi tape that you're feeling needs to go in here. Maybe um, you just have plain masking tape and that, like I did, and that's what you're feeling. Um, maybe you're feeling you wanna collage some paper over the rips. Don't be super precise about it. Don't um, agonize about it. Just, again, go with how you're feeling. Almost, we're almost there. I can tell you we're ready. There, there's a couple spots that are ripping. You can't see them, but I can, and that's that's okay. You might get to the point like I'm starting to get to with the sprayer where um, it's not wanting to spray <clears throat> because there's running out of water. Okay, once I have it to where there's some spray on all of them, whatever's left in here, before I go wash the sprayer out, I dump on there. So now we're gonna just let it dry and um, let it go. And when we're when it's done, we'll get started on um, our Rorschach test or ink blot art therapy on the journal. Um, and um, we'll see where we go from there. So um, I want you to prep your journals, let them dry, and um, I'll be back in the next clip before we end this video, and I'll show you what the result is of the, how this looks and we'll do some taping because it's gonna need some masking tape. So I'll be back when this is dry.
Okay guys, I got lots of stuff on my desk I have to deal with, but we're gonna do this first. So this is the journal that we dyed, and um, yeah, that's fine. And I'm gonna just try to flatten it a little bit, but it's only gonna do so much. Anyway, we're gonna go through it, and we're gonna find places like this where the paper tore, and we're gonna just put some masking tape and tape up all of those spots. The tape is going to be part of the background, part of the spots and marks that are going to hopefully help us do some art and journaling in a way that helps us work through whatever it is we have to work through. Um, you can use colored tape if that's what you're feeling. I am really just feeling using masking tape, so I'm going to use that. And this is how I do the spines when they rip, just FYI. And just push it all down good. Okay, and then I'm not worried about these little tears on the edges, um, but like here we go. There's like. So let's fix that. Okay. And I'm going to go through every page, page by page, and I'm going to fix each and every one that I feel like I need to, and maybe you're not gonna feel like you need to put tape over any of the holes. Because maybe you wanna work with the holes as part of what you end up doing on the page as part of your therapy, that might work too. But anyway, for me, I wanna fix the holes and I'll be right back. Okay, so I want you to make one or two journals and um, then join me in the next video where we do some um, ink blob art on one of the pages. And um, again, maybe you want to have your journals be more colorful like my first one was. Uh, maybe you want it to just be all one color. Um, maybe you want to use paint instead of inks or water soluble materials, you can do that. My suggestion is use something with a fairly matte finish. There's another spot that needs tape. Um, use something with a fairly matte finish because it's easier to draw and write over. If you use traditional acrylic paints that are glossy, they can be a challenge to write or draw over. So I don't necessarily recommend them. Um, so just keep that in mind. That's why I tend to use ink, or maybe I would use a gouache or a matte finish paint if I was gonna go that way. 
If you're gonna do paint too, you can only do probably one or two pages at a time without really having a huge problem with the journal and all the pages like completely sticking together. So, um, but experiment and play. Grab a journal that's just sitting in the closet that you probably know you're never gonna use for anything else. Um, use what you have. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. I'm going to prep for the next video. I'll see you over there. Don't forget to stay safe, stay creative, stay healthy. Do what um, makes you happy. And um, if you are struggling with mental health issues, please don't be afraid to go out and get some professional help. Again, I am not a counselor or a therapist of any kind. Um, I go see someone for that. There's no shame in needing help. Um, with if you have mental health issues. I will try to find some sort of a link or something down below, but if I can't and there's nothing there and you guys have a some kind of reference website that you use, um, please let me know and I'll add that in. And uh, yeah, go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it and I'll see you later. Bye guys.